urban flooding. We know that recently Chennai was in urban flooding. In that context, uh, we are discussing the topic disaster management taken. So why are we discussing this? Or we know we are discussing this in the background of the Chennai flood, which has caused many damages and also the country, uh, although the Chennai area was in floods for many days, mainly in the backdrop of a cyclone, right? So recently, the Prime Minister approved India's first urban flood mitigation project with a budget of rupees 561 crore for the Chennai Basin. Okay. It is the first urban flooding project by India. Okay. So might be a chance that in the coming mains, there may be a question of urban flooding regarding in the mains. Okay. So this is not the first time Chennai is uh, uh, what um, experiencing the flood. There were floods in 2015 as well, and 2015 and other years before as well. So Chennai is an area where the floods are prone to floods. Okay, and also we can see in Chennai mostly urban city uh, is an urban city mainly urban centers are uh, it is considered as an urban setup. So the reason why we are considering as an urban flooding. Okay, the project was initiated in response to increasing frequency of major floods in Chennai, which has experienced three significant flooding events in the last eight years. Okay, including the last one of Cyclone Michon. Okay, so the project is known as Integrated Urban Flood Management Activities for Chennai Basin Project. Okay, and the funding is done under National Disaster Management Disaster Mitigation Fund or NDMF. We have a National Disaster Management Act of 2015. Okay, in that in that act, there comes a funding mechanism for mitigating the uh, what uh, disasters. Okay, that is the National Disaster Mitigation Fund. We have a National Disaster Man uh, Disaster Management Act through which there are many guidelines which were provided according to the act for uh, dealing with or uh, various uh, disasters. Okay, and also. In the according to the act, we have developed a fund or we have created a fund for mitigating the disasters. Okay, so this project of urban flooding or a first plan for urban flooding will also be dealt or funded by the National Disaster Mitigation Fund. Okay, so as we know, it is based on the Chennai Basin. So India's first urban mitigation project will be to enhance Chennai's resilience to flooding. Okay. The major aspects or the major focus to develop Chennai uh, uh, resilience, Chennai's resilience to urban flooding will be by creating, improving infrastructure. Okay. How? By rainwater management, etc. Okay. Thereby reducing the flood effects or flood risk. Okay. And also this project will help other metropolitan cities or other urban centers to uh, deal with the um, if the flood comes in their area as well. So this will serve as a model for developing the broader framework to other areas as well. Clear? So we discussed that there is a first plan for urban fl uh, flooding and its name is the uh, Integrated Urban Flood Management Activities. And now it is for the uh, first time it is happening in the country for urban flooding. And now it is for Chennai Basin Project. Okay. So the major aim or the major objective or focus will be on the development of infrastructure, especially on the rainwater management. Okay. And also this will act as a model for other cities also uh, to develop the uh, excessive, uh, to develop various plans for their uh, tackling of the urban flooding if due to excessive rain or also uh, other causes, the flooding happens in the cities. Okay. The funding is mainly from or funded this funded from the National Disaster Mitigation Fund, which was developed under National uh, Disaster Management Act of 2015. Clear? Okay. Now, what are the causes of urban flooding and what are, uh, uh, are next we are discussing about? There are natural causes as well as the man made causes. Okay. What are the natural causes? What will be the natural causes? Usually, when we say about urban flooding, we discuss or we integrate it with the man-made causes only, right? But there are natural causes as well. What will be the reason for flooding, normal flooding, increased rainfall? I didn't hear you. 
cyclones yes there will be a climate changing effort, efforts uh, due to which the thing will be or the uh, flooding will be happen similarly here also the natural causes are first thing is the meteorological phenomenon okay mainly the cyclones okay low pressure centers leading to cyclonic activities in arabian sea and bay of bengal induce heavy rainfall low pressure centers cyclone these are dealt in the geography in climatology in detail right so first thing is regarding the meteorological phenomenon that is regarding the cyclones especially which are happening in the bay of bengal and arabian sea initially we can see that the bay of bengal is mostly prone to cyclones but there is a now a shift to the arabian sea right due to the change in the climatic activities etc this will be or this may you study in detail in climatology right so we can see that cyclonic activities is one of the reason and for example in 2020 hyderabad flood was associated with deep depression of bay of bengal that developed in uh, that uh, bob to 02 that is bay of bengal depression okay so we can see usually flooding is related with the some of the depression so cyclonic activities in the bay of bengal or uh, like in the arabian sea okay usual cases next thing is regarding the intense rainfall okay there was a rainfall pattern or weather weather uh, pattern for rainfall right monsoonic activities etc but due to climate change there is a pattern change in the rainfall activities as well right so climate change has increased the intensity of rain falling over a small duration of time also some areas can receive excessive rainfall due to weather anomalies like cloud burst etc which will result in flooding okay the variations in climate uh, has resulted in the variations in rainfall patterns as well so some areas will get excessive rainfall some areas may be devoid of rainfall leading to drought etc okay so there may be if the area is getting excessive rainfall meaning uh, in the small uh, for a small duration or uh, unlike the rain rainfall pattern okay so there may be a chances of flooding the massive for example the massive flooding in the chennai has witnessed 2015 was majorly due to the increase in rainfall nearly in the area more than 120 cm of rainfall was spa Uh, received okay now the next major important thing is regarding the course of river okay we know that young uh, young rivers we can see majorly they uh, change their course of uh, course of the river okay okay that is uh, we can see meanders in young rivers right meanders is due, due to the change in the course of river but sometimes this course of river may uh, change in the course of river may uh, flood the areas associated with this also okay for example bihar sora of bengal bihar is kosi river right kosi river causes flood in the region because of its change in course okay young rivers are majorly involved in the change in the course of the river okay okay we discussed about the natural causes which are responsible for the uh flooding first thing we discussed was regarding the meteorological activities of phenomenon for example cyclone next thing we discussed was regarding the climate change which resulted in increased rainfall and also pattern change in the rainfall activities as well then we discussed regarding the cause of the change of young rivers especially uh young rivers mainly they change the course to the uh, other areas which will result in the flooding for example in bihar we saw the kosi river so kosi river is also known as the sora of bihar right next thing is regarding the man made causes so the first thing we can see is regarding inadequate uh, drainage system or drainage infrastructure okay so for example let's take the case of delhi okay in 1972 or 75 1972 to 75 times we can see that the drainage pattern in delhi was very effective uh, and the drainage uh, was constructed in there okay in 1972 75 times but the thing was like uh, the population there was only 6 million nearly that time okay but if we see today the population has increased nearly to 20 million in that region but the drainage system is yet the same okay so this means that there is no increase in the infrastructure or no change in the drainage infrastructure 
according to the change in the population or change in the uh, development or built in the area okay so this is one of the cause of infra uh, urban flood so inadequate drainage infrastructure in the last 20 years the indian cities have grown manifold with the original built up area okay this means that though the increase in population or though the increase in activities the area's infrastructure remains the same however most cities rely on a century old drainage system covering only a small part of the core city remember uh, clear with this clear this okay next one is pollution okay next thing is we said that there is inadequate infrastructure inadequate drainage system etc okay but this drainage system even after we have uh, inadequate drainage system these drainage systems are getting blocked due to waste disposal or blockage of waste etc right we have only inadequate infrastructure uh, drainage infrastructure but even uh, when that drain is, drains are getting clogged due to waste disposal okay waste etc so this means that pollution is another reason which enhances the flooding increase in urban population without corresponding expansion of civic facilities like infrastructure of waste disposal etc results to clogging of the uh, drainage system okay and storm water drains and also we can see especially when the cultural and religious festivals are happening there may be a chance uh, there may be increased waste etc right so these gets dumped into the drainage system without proper waste material uh, disposal okay so resulted in the further clogging so we discussed that initially we have only inadequate drainage system and that drainage system is also getting clogged due to inadequate waste disposal or uh, unscientific method of waste disposal that is just dumping of the waste in the drainage system is uh, occurring which will result in the drains and further increase in the flood okay next thing is regarding the encroachment and terrain uh, terrain alteration okay so we see that uh, due to uh, development is a good thing but then also many areas which act as a natural drainage area like catchment areas of rivers etc are getting often inhabited by people okay so there is a change in or encroachment in the uh, area or terrains okay so catchment is the area where the catchment is what river catchment drainage basin okay so these are areas where the rivers flow or the rivers flow have their uh, tributaries distributaries etc and the area where the river gives its water so these areas are often areas where the drainage system is accurate and the drainage system is efficient okay but these areas getting en encroached in the name of development okay the people uh, even the public or the private entities built houses there built, uh, even we have heard that the uh, marshlands are being uh, deposited with soil for the uh um construction of big buildings etc right so this means that the natural drainage is getting affected so this will further aggravate the flooding okay this will cause irreversible damage encroachment and terrain alteration lasting irreversible damage has done to the real estate sector and the public agencies by flattening terrain and altering the natural drainage route okay next thing is reducing seepage due to concretization okay we can see that the uh, urban centers or the urban cities they are often referred to as concrete jungles right so concrete jungles means we can see concrete entities even uh, houses and also in the floor we can see the uh, uh, floor or the so, uh, surface is often deposited by concretes right these concretes uh, even though they are aesthetically good but the problem is they won't absorb water okay so the water does not percolate into the ground okay so this we leads that this means that they will be staying in the surface itself which will cause flooding if the uh, we know that the surface there is water the drainage is blocked this means that the there will be flood in, uh, in ultimately okay so indian cities are becoming increasingly impervious to water not just because of increasing built up but also because of nature of materials used like they are non porous hard they don't allow the percolation of water into the ground okay they will get uh, deposited or stuck in the uh, surface of the 
concretes okay the, the water remains stagnant when the drainage is also closed this means that the water will remain as such unless the drainage is cleared okay so this is another reason for urban flooding next is destruction of wetlands this is similar to that of what we discussed regarding the encroachment and terrain alterations okay here wetlands are also uh, areas where the or wetlands also help in the draining out of excessive water okay when the wetlands are dis, uh, destructed means they will lose the ability to drain water and will uh, lead to the stagnation of water and ultimately flood okay marshes and flood plains away okay marshes and flood plains play an important role in the over uh, in controlling the overflowing rivers okay however they are increasingly destroyed to meet up the urban demands for example pallikarni marshland of the uh, uh, tamil nadu area they are also known as flood sink area of chennai okay they are about initially 5000 hectares but during the 20 uh, 2010 and 11 they are only uh, they reduced to 600 hectares see how much we lost okay so this is one of the major destruction uh, or reason for the flood especially of 2015 if there were enough marshlands or if the marshland palikarne marshland was conserved then there might be a chance that or maybe the flood will not be affected in this much uh, intensity okay why these marshlands and wetlands will act as a natural drainage and they will drain the you know uh, water which is access to the ground clear okay another thing is uh, you have heard about mangroves right so uh, this is not regarding the urban flooding but uh, since mangroves are another important um, a, um, um plants or important um, things which are help in the uh, in draining the water for example and also help in the uh, protection of the coastal areas okay for example it's pichavaram in tamil nadu they have the intensive ma mangrove uh, deposits okay so they uh, uh, the tsunami didn't affect that area this is because of the mangroves okay i what i said is these ecosystem services or these important um, arenas are helping the natural drainage or naturally protecting the areas so when these natural uh, things or natural ecosystem are lost means there will be a chance of adversely affecting the uh, disasters for example flood in chennai if there was a palikarni uh, marshland was conserved then means that there may be a chance of less flooding or less intensity of flooding similarly the pichavara mangroves uh, was uh, supported or was conserved that is the reason why they were not affected by the tsunami okay so this means that this ecosystem or uh, the sustainable development or the economic uh, ecosystem need to be conserved and also development need to be initiated but in a sustainable manner then we can avoid these disasters okay another thing is water management okay we know that there is a poor management and lack of interdependent uh, interdepartmental cooperation we have know that pm gati shakti was bought because of the in order to coordinate departments for the development services right so before that the major uh, incident was that like if uh, one uh, department does a work there will be Uh, the next department comes and they will uh, hinder or they will uh, uh, reinitiate the work there okay that means ma there is no uh, department coordination between the various departments of the ministries so that is the reason why pm gati shakti was initiated same thing is here itself water management is not done accordingly there is a lack of water management between the different departments okay ministry of sanitation the uh, Uh, i mean ministry of environment department ministry of jal shakti ministry of uh, env uh, environment forest and climate change they need to be integrated because forest uh, or the environment and the pollution is not a different thing and the water management is not a different thing they need to be integrated together okay so this disintegration may also be a reason for urban flooding clear okay in the departmental coordination reservoirs etc so uh, when there is a uh, filling in if dams okay sometimes there is a uh, uh, opening of the reservoirs or dams which will further create a flood okay so there need to be a coordination between different different departments as well 
people sometimes people will not be aware regarding the dam opening or reservoirs opening okay so this will uh, even first one thing is it will uh, destruct the uh, lead to destruction of infrastructure etc other thing is there will be loss of lives as well at least we can prevent the loss of lives okay with the uh, coordination of different departments in the ministries next thing is illegal mining okay so majorly uh we know that rivers uh, have sands cords etc right these are oftenly taken by the big mafias or the private entities uh, etc for their uh, need but what happened is the river will uh, have lost their catchment area or drainage area so what will the river do they will travel at a different pace and different uh, shift okay so even though there is a natural cause that young rivers uh, changes its course but we are further intensifying it by illegal mining and other activities clear so illegal mining both on the catchment and on the bed of the rivers have reduced the carrying capacity of rivers as well okay so alternation of the uh, course of the river will be an aggrav uh, aggressive outcome of the uh, this activities clear okay so we discussed about what are the reasons of urban flood we discussed that there are natural causes as well as man made causes in natural causes we discussed that one of the major reason is meteorological phenomena like climate uh, cyclones etc and the next thing is increased rainfall due to change in the climatic pattern and also the course of the river changes due to as young rivers changes its course okay then we discussed the man made causes and the first thing we discussed was regarding the inadequate infrastructure like drainage etc and then we uh, discuss was regarding the pollution which will further clog the drainage system and further enhances the flooding okay next thing we discuss was regarding illegal mining and other uh, uh, poor water management or due to in, uh, lack of coordination between the departments or ministries etc then we discussed about the yes natural ecosystems or natural areas which will help in the drainage of the uh rivers etc for example wetlands marshlands then uh, marsh marshlands etc okay this will help in the natural drainage of the uh, water or the river but since they, they are getting lost there will be an increase the chances of flood also the concretization of the cities okay they also in further increase the stagnation of water and thus flood will also increase okay next next we are discussing about india's vulnerability to urban flood so first thing is tropical monsoon climate we know that in the uh, short span of june to september that is summer monsoon we are receiving an average of 80 cm rainfall okay so means that there will be an annual uh, we get at uh, uh, enough water or the monsoon we uh, the india is getting is mostly 70 percentage in this time okay so we have a chance that there may be an increased monsoonal climate or uh, tropical monsoon climate in this area so if there is an increase in the uh, rainfall during this time means we are getting uh, more than what we are uh, anticipating so there is a chance of increasing flood during this time okay what happens when during this time there will be a cyclone so there will be further increase in the rainfall okay what happens there is a uh, change in the climatic pattern or weather pattern there will be further increase in the rainfall so this means that there will be a chance that we are getting uh, more than we anticipated or we expected and there will be a chance of urban flooding next thing is regarding the urban population okay so one of the survey says that by 2050 there will be 52 percentage of indians in the urban centers okay and also ipcc report says that area and intensity of flooding events are expected to increase in the country so the urban population is increasing but the urban facilities remain the same right for example drainage which we saw with the example of delhi so the drainage facilities remain the same but the population is increasing according to a survey nearly in uh, by 2050 will be having 52 percentage of people in the urban centers so there may be a chance that with the increasing population there the congestion also increases but the infrastructure remains the same so there is a chance that 
area and also intensity of the urban flood will increase and this is according to the report of ipcc clear ipcc is intergovernmental panel on climate change okay they usually collect uh, uh, they usually create reports or publishes reports but they do not uh, do any research they collect information from other researchers and uh, 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 publish a report okay regarding the climate changes Next is messy and hidden urbanization. Okay, this is a uh, report, or this is the term according to the uh, World Bank. Okay, World Bank reported that the India has a messy and hidden uh, urbanization. Okay, that means the pressures of the infrastructure is high, and also the basic services are not enough for the existing or for upcoming urban uh, urban population, and also landing and housing is a problem. Uh, okay. These are due to increasing urbanization, there is a problem. So, we are having a hidden and messy urbanization. This is according to the World Bank. That means, if the same thing which we discussed earlier, the, uh, urban, uh, when the urban population increases, there will be an increase or uh, demand in the infrastructure. Okay, But the infrastructure pressures increases, the basic services to the people like land and housing is not sufficient. But the uh, urbanization is increasing or the urban population is increasing. Okay. Next thing is large vulnerable population. Okay. We know about slums, right? Slums are seen in urban centers. So, in 2000, according to the 2011 census, we can see that nearly 6.55 crore of the Indians live in slums. Okay. And in that, 13.7 percentage of the people are below poverty line. So slums are meaning they are not, uh, uh, they are areas in which people live uh, in a very congested manner and also in areas where they are not scientifically, uh, like drainage or infrastructure is not there, right? So the population is high, the drainage is not uh, uh, there enough. And also, the people are congested in the area, lack of housing, the same thing which the uh, World Bank said. Okay, they are examples of hidden and messy urbanization. Okay, so in these areas, when the flood in, uh, water like uh, stagnates, there may uh, there is not any uh, other like passage for the water to flow. So this will further increase the urbanized urban floods and also the results or consequences of urban urban floods like lack of their livelihood lack of uh, uh, like loss of their livelihood loss of their lives etc okay this will further aggravate the problems associated with urban floods so we discussed about the india's vulnerability to urban floods In, is india vulnerable to urban floods there are uh, statistics or data which shows that India can be vulnerable to urban floods. One is regarding the increasing urban population. Nearly by 2050, there will be a 52 percentage of urban population. But according to World Bank, it is a hidden and messy urbanization. That means there uh, is a in, uh, lack of uh, or increased pressure in the infrastructure along with the lack of housing or properties for the people, okay, due to increase in urbanization. And also regarding the tropical monsoons, okay, tropical monsoon we get, sometimes there will be an aggravation there due to the climate change patterns or meteorological activities, etc. And also the next thing is regarding the large vulnerable population like slums, where the urban, urban flooding happens, there may be an aggravated results of urban flooding. Okay, so India is vulnerable in due to these cases. Now, as I said, according to national... Uh, According to National Disaster Man uh, Management Act 2015, there are many guidelines to how to deal with the flooding. Okay, so flooding and also other disasters as well. So this is our guidelines given by the NDMA for uh, dealing with the urban floods. First thing is regarding the use of technology. Okay, here Doppler weather radars. That is, it initiates proper prediction of the weather whether there is a cyclone may be coming, low pressure areas, whether there may be English to high rainfall, etc. Okay, so this leads with the use of technology to be expanded. For example, Doppler weather radars, okay, mainly to predict the environment change or the climate change. Okay, next thing is 
data collection data collection regarding the existing storm water drainage system okay existing drainage system etc that is uh, what are um, in which all areas the drainage system is properly developed in which all areas the um, things to be developed drainage should be developed there, where there is watershed development what uh, okay so there will be proper data regarding the drainage system etc okay so what is the need for that if we know the adequate drainage system development then we can uh, address the issue of drainage blockage or can uh, uh, drainage blockage as well as introduction of new drainages etc right so thus flood could be prevented next is flood resilient infrastructure okay so this means that we need infrastructure which can uh, go hand in hand with the uh, flood sometimes we can see that in flood there will be a, a destruction of the rails uh, rail bridges road bridges etc okay why because they are not resilient with the flood which is or the disaster which has happened okay so we need to develop infrastructure which are resilient to flood for example uh, in uh, road and rail bridges that cross the um, uh, that in 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 fact do not block the water okay this is another guideline by ndma next is every building should have this is regarding uh, also regarded to the resilient flood resilient infrastructure rain water harvesting should be uh, have uh, in every building an integral component as the every building okay rain water harvesting as we know increased rainfall can clog the uh, can be another reason for the uh, process of urban flooding right so if we have every building has the rain water harvesting plants this means that the excessive water won't stagnant in the urban centers and won't cause flooding so there uh, there should be rain water rain water harvesting as a part of the building okay so why we are discussing urban flooding now chennai floods there was a integrated management okay plan was developed and the main focus of the plan is rainwater harvesting which is also in the guidelines of ndma clear next land management see in the low lying areas of the metropolitan cities there happen to be slums or areas with people uh, in habitation okay this will further aggravate the uh, effects of urban flooding okay so what the ndma suggests is to develop low lying areas into parks and other areas where the human inhabitation is very less clear so low lying areas in cities reserved for parks and other low uh, impact human activities clear next thing is dealing in urban flood and the rural flood okay so it means that urban flood uh, the rural flood or rural areas are often affected by the flow of the uh, rivers okay so this means that the urban flooding is not as a result of the flow of river okay there may be a chances or there uh, there are reasons of like drainage uh, clogging inadequate drainage system or concretization of the areas etc okay illegal mining uh, uh, and uh, encroachment of the areas etc so the areas or the reasons for the urban flooding and the rural flooding are different so we need to uh, consider rural flooding and urban flooding as separate disaster as well okay so the guidelines for the rural flooding tag, uh, mitigation and the urban flooding mitigation should also be different since the causes are different the mitigation should also be different clear okay so we discuss some of the way forwards by the ndma first to use of technology like doppler uh, weather uh, weather radars and next to proper data to analyze the proper data like that of the what are the drainage system etc okay then uh, we discussed was regarding the infrastructure flood resilient infrastructure should be developed and also a rainwater harvesting should be made important as a parts of the residence then we discussed that low lying areas should be made areas of lesser human impact and also the important thing is to treat urban and uh, the rural uh, flood as a different entities or separate disasters okay dealing in of urban and rural disasters so what is the uh, way forward proper planning framework should be developed okay 
like uh, we said that proper improper management of the water is one of the reason for urban flooding right so there should be proper planning framework which effectively manage floods and cities need to survey the wetlands and also these water bodies and catchment areas should be included when we consider development in the urban areas okay so when we consider development plan in the urban areas the catchments uh, of the rivers the uh, river drainage areas the uh, wetlands marshlands etc the natural and also the development aspect both sustainable development measures should be considered clear and also the other thing is regarding the upgrading of the drainage systems okay we said that there is a lack of infrastructure which is another reason for the urban floods so the upgrading of the drainage system is also another thing so proper planning framework in which we need to consider both the natural and also the uh, development processes both sustainable development aspects should be involved when the plan uh, planning framework is created next thing is improved predictions so here this means that vulnerability mapping that means uh, when all the rail uh, like cyclones uh, come and which all cities will be vulnerable to the meteorological phenomenon or how much rainfall will be getting okay so the vulnerable map mapping of the city should be done properly for that we can use technology for example doppler uh, weather radars by, uh, which was suggested by the ndmh okay so improved predictions could be done next is proper solid man management system we know the causes pollution or the dumping of uh, based on the drainage so they should be properly managed the next is need for holistic engagement that means government is not only responsible for develop maintaining the uh, drainage or uh, um, mitigating the urban floods equally civil society and local people or the community there should also be in, uh, involved in maintaining the uh, drainage not clogging the drainage okay they should also be there should be a collective effort by the government agencies as well as the civil societies there okay so there should be collaborative flood mitigation strategies clear next is best practices so we discuss what can be done and now we are discussing some of the best practices okay when you are writing the um, examination mains examination you know that disaster management is in mains topic right so when you write the disaster management in mains examination if you got best practices or the models like uh, we discussed this uh, integrated uh, water management on urban uh, in chennai basin as a it can act as a model for other uh, metropolitan cities as well right so if you write a best model or best practices you may gain more marks so first thing is regarding the we need we said that there need to be a proper prediction right of the weather etc so in mumbai we have i flows that is integrated flood warning system integrated flood warning system for mumbai okay what the i flows does is it will uh, and uh, check or uh, will uh, alert the possible flood prone areas in advance okay this is of i flows is of mumbai now currently these are uh, developed for other cities like chennai Bam, uh, bangalore etc then other metropolitan cities are also now developing their uh, alert system okay now the next one is china's sponge city initiative okay china's sponge city initiative the name is given as means the water what does a sponge do it will absorb all the water there won't be a stagnation in water right so the similar concept meaning here the uh, water management is done along with proper urban planning policies and designs so that the water won't be stagnated it will be absorbed by different part of the cities like drainages proper planning etc okay it does not mean it doesn't mean that the soil will absorb every water no it means that the so water will not be stagnated by proper policies and designing of the cities the water will be uh, drained drained as uh, as such and there won't be any flood instances okay it should have appropriate planning and legal framework and tools in place to implement maintain and adapt the infrastructure 
to collect store and treat rain water okay now china's goal is by 2020 80% of the urban area should absorb and reuse at least 70% of the rain water the major aim is in the similar to that of the rain water harvesting clear so in way forward we can also write like development of a sponge city similar to that of the china clear